Okay, so let's, I'm gonna touch brief, briefly. We've gotta get these files off of this machine and into our, our ecosystem. And this is how we're gonna get those STLs off. Um, so we're gonna jump through this quickly. So if you have an iTero, this is the workflow to get them off, and this is how we wanna think through how we get them off, because that's important. Um, other scanners, you're gonna have your own mechanisms to do this too, getting those files off. Each scanner is gonna have its own. Itero's really cool because you just open up your web browser and you type myitero.com and you know how to browse those files. And there's a button called export and that's that fancy word where we're taking off an STL off of that site. So I wanna touch base because if you have an Itero, you're familiar with this, that there's really three questions you have to answer to get those files into your, onto your desktop. The first one is export type. How do we want to export this file? Do we want to choose open shell or solid model with low profile base? So an open shell, think of it just like as a skin without a base. It's hollow underneath. It's one cell layer thick and it's wide open. A solid model with a base is a watertight three-dimensional object with no holes in it. It's a watertight object um, and it has a flat base on it, just like you'd print a model off. So if you think about it in this nutshell, if you're just downloading a model to go print a model straight from your scanner and you want to go do retainers off it. So this is, you know, we do a ton of retainer models. Think about just having them put a, a, a base on it so you can just drop it on your printer. It's ready for printing. It's simple. You don't have to add extra steps. But if you want to print, if you want to go manipulate that file, sometimes it's helpful to see through the underside because you can see the contact points in two opposing models when you have it in an open shell. So think about an open shell as like, it's leaving a window underneath to see underneath your model because sometimes you want to see where those teeth are touching. When you're doing digital wax ups and you're setting teeth on top, having the underside open is helpful because you can look underneath and say, oh, the upper arch is contacting here and here. I need to adjust the occlusion from that angle. So think about your application, what you're using it for when you make that decision. Um, if you chose the wrong one, it's not hard to convert one to the other but it's simpler just to kind of think about where you're going. So retainers here, other work, surgical guides and wax ups. I kind of like to go more open shell. If ever in doubt, choose open shell because it's easy going from open shell to solid, not so much the other way around. Is that what you found too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Most softwares will have a one click button to go from an open shell to add a base. So like yeah, Rayware. like Rayware, like even the Sprint Ray, if you drop an open shell in there, it's going to recognize that and give you a one-click fix to add a base. So, yeah. Um, oops, sorry. Let me go. Matt, when it's a solid model, do you guys still think about this as a, you say a watertight, like it's not solid all the way through? It's not solid, it's just a, it, it is just a shell, it's like hollow in the middle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In it that, is, in that sense, kind of like sometimes you have little holes in there. Is that why? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, it's watertight in that nature that it's it's wrapped but it's it like, like solid model. yeah it looks solid okay. but it's literally I think I always use the term one cell layer thick I don't know why that sticks with me okay. um, but it, it's it's wrapped all 360 degrees yeah, it'll always print solid though right? yeah there's a watertight thin layer on the outside yeah the software will never print it as hollow so I would consider it as a solid model yeah but even though it, it technically isn't going to be cut in half it's going to be empty space so Okay. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. Yep. A solid model. Yeah. D digitally, you could cut that thing in half and look in the middle as hollow. But when you print it, it's just going to print it as solid, like no nothing in you know no space. So your second option is your format. So these three options, you want to think through. Arches combined. That means if you scanned upper and lower and you brought it out, it's going to have one file on your desktop. It's going to say scan. And you open it up, it's two arches locked together. That's not usually helpful because it's more helpful to have two files come out, one's a lower and one's an upper, so that you can manipulate one or the other. So this rarely we use because locking two together isn't very, very helpful. So really it's more of a file per arch option where you get two files, a lower and an upper, and then you get to choose, do you want them orientated in occlusion, where when you open them up together, they're, they're locked in that byte that you, that you scanned them in? Or do you want them um, both with just the teeth facing up and a flat, a flat bottom? It doesn't really matter uh, which one you choose here. Generally, when in doubt, lock them in occlusion, because when you're bringing them into software, it's nice to have them know where they were. 
All these files have a memory to think of it as a GPS location, um, X, Y, Z access. Like they have some sort of memory in space where if you move, you know, move this model over here and then you sit, export them, if you go open them in a new software, they're going to stay like this. But then you can tell them to, hey, this model, go relate to this model in its original location. So they have memory and the softwares allow you to access that. So generally, two separate files in relationship to, I know, it gets, gets a little confusing. Uh, last type, do you want color or no color? STL, remember, this is our file of, of choice. This is what we want to bring into the other objects. These color objects, um, not really necessary for what we're doing um, when we're not drawing like crown margins and stuff. And here's, here's a, a picture of three potential objects. These were open in MeshMix so, so you can see. So let's start here. These were exported with solid bases. You can see the flat base on the bottom of these. These came out, we exported them with a base, but we, we didn't export them in relationship. So I purposefully so, showed that these, these aren't in orientation of how they were scanned in the mouth. These are just arbitrary locations. So that's not always helpful. These were scanned in, these were exported in relationship in their byte, but these were open models. So these are, this is that eggshell. You can see how it's, you know, the teeth are in relationship. This is wide open here. This is an empty space, just like this. So the, that pink there in this software shows that that's the underside of the model where it's just open. So you'd have to go, if you wanted to print this, you'd have to add a base to it so that it's become solid and turns it into something like that so you can print it. So I think that's helpful to see that so you guys know when you open up a file, why does it look like that? Why does it look like that? It's the difference between a sh an eggshell export and a flat, a flat base export. And you know, a lot of this might be basic to you guys, you know, for you guys that are doing it, but we've got to start from the ground up and build all these basics so that we're all thinking on the same line so that when we get into the more complex stuff, we all have that understanding of the basics of what are these, these files look like and how do they, what are, they, um, what are the, um, the terminologies behind them.